What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Slice Guy Lenore back with another video. I got some heat for you guys today. I got my boy Skinny Loke in the chair. Again, the all time classic, the shag. I think it was originated in Texas. But this is my Memphis swag tour, the Slice Guy shag, whatever you want to call it. Right now, we just combing after her, lifting it off the scalp, preparing it to be cut down with this 1.5 guard. We picking out the shag area. He ain't had a haircut in two months for sure, so we finna get him right. Like I said, I got this 1.5 guard on with the lever open, knocking the hair down. If you watch any of my previous videos, you notice I cut most of my wavelength clients down with the 1.5 guard, because I think that's the perfect length. To me, cutting the shag is not as much more difficult than cutting a regular haircut. It's just all about being cautious. Therefore, we clean up the top first. Then when we get to the back, I stop like 10% of the way before I get to the bottom, which I'm not going to the bottom at all. But when I stop that 10%, I kind of flick out just to get those loose hairs that's on the shag out the way in a flick out motion like I'm doing right now. Then I'm going to grab my number two guard and do the same thing, flick out. With this number two, I'm fading down, but I'm actually fading up. So I'm moving down with the clipper, but I'm fading up because I'm using a bigger guard. I just was using a 1.5 to flick out, now I'm using a number two. And it's just kind of smoothing out transitioning into this shag area. Now I'm dusting out my client. The more you clean off your cameras, the more focused you be doing a cut. Going back in with my pick, I'm stretching this shag to its full length right before I start my rough dry shaping. Pay attention to my wrist motions and how I scoop out as I work my way down, giving it that ramp of fit. I'm on the outermost parts of the sides, proceeding to the back, just cleaning it up. I'm not really trying to take off her because I'm trying to let it grow, but I do want it shaped up and clamped up. Uh, so I'm taking my time. It's really like a rough drive. I think I'm gonna really clean it up off camera or do a little something, but this is really gonna just help me see how I'm gonna go into my taper because I base my taper off of how I got it shaped up. Starting off the mid taper with a bow guideline. If they not getting a light taper, we're gonna always start it off with the bow guideline. We're doing it in a half moon like shape right where the top of the ear end. Then we're gonna clean up the excess hair at the bottom. Now we're going in with the liver open on my magic clip sitting in the second guideline getting it as neat as possible. We want it as neat as possible so we can see what we're doing within this guideline. So within this guideline, what we're gonna be doing is working our way down. We're gonna be closing that lever little by little until this section of this taper is blended. For a quick reference, I'm still establishing my guideline. When it speed up, there's me working my way down. Now we're dealing with the third guy line, going in with our number one guard with the lever open, making a duplicate guy line right over the second guy line. And we're gonna do the same thing, work our way down until it blended. It don't get no simpler than this, bro. When it comes to fading, these steps are dummy proof. 
what really differentiates is your detail game. They will make the tape will look better than the next person doing these same steps. I done watched a lot of YouTubers in the game and I feel like these steps are A1 for anybody whether you a beginner barber or a pro. Get my number two guard with the lever open, stretching into the length on the top, making sure it connects well, kind of getting towards the shag area, make sure that blends well into the taper area. It's the thing about the shag, you gotta make sure that shag area connects to the taper too. And, uh, you're just cleaning it up, working our way down into the taper. Now I got my 1.5 guard on, smoothing it out, smoothing out the shag area. Disclaimer, I did not have the guard directly on the shag when I was just smoothing it out. Don't do that because you will patch it. Mainly speaking for my beginner barbers watching. Still got my 1.5 guard on, but I'm going against the grain, fading into the number two guard, kind of trying to bring the number two and that one guard area together. That's the reason why it's 1.5. So we're going to bring that together, and whatever we don't get, we're going to go back in with that one guard, clean it up a little bit more. Then we're going to go to that level open, what I like to call my get straight to the point two. We're going to go detail crazy, make sure that taper look beautiful next to that shag, man. Out there trying to go detail crazy. Remember, my lever open and I'm using my corners. Just remember that I can't leave y'all hanging if I wanted to. Splendid. We're taking the front edge up down with a number one, a guard level lower than the wrist of the head. Go in with your vertical bars first, then if the haircut consists of a C cup area, go ahead and attack this C cup area. Make sure you get this C cup as crispy as possible while still trying to balance keeping it natural. And you gotta make sure it's even with the other side, which I'm doing right now, making sure it's even. With the vertical bars and the C cup symmetrically set in, you can see exactly where I'm gonna go with this edge up, straight across. I start in the middle, Work my way to one side and work my way to the other side. As you see me bagging up out the head, I'm stepping back, making sure I'm going straight across, checking my work. Because by you being so up close, you would think you're going straight. You got the hairline straight, then by the time you step back, it's not straight. So to get that full view, really like the third person view, because when you're so close, it's like you're not. You're not in a third person view, you're really in like a second person view. You see what I'm saying? You're not in a third person view, so you get that third person view angle, and it really shows whether it's straight or not. 
Little local with stupid slight but photo enhancements. The slick they ain't even want no enhancements, how slice he was without him. But we get, had to turn up for the video. Uh, giving this Steve Harvey is the old heads to say. We just being light as possible with these fibers. A lot of people use the spray guns, paint, and stuff like that to die, which is cool. I ain't knocking it. But it ain't my style. When I think of a mirror haircut, I think of a natural looking cut. And I feel like the fibers is the best thing to get that out with the spray and the paint and stuff like that it be too shiny and people know like it's obvious that it's spray you know what i'm saying even though it might look clean it might be chopped but we know for sure that it's spray you know what i'm saying with the fibers if you apply it right it have a second guessing they'll know for sure like this can't be his natural hairline it's too crispy but they don't they can't walk up on you and be like yeah, this paint, this, this, you know what I'm saying? This type of time we be on. What really bring this shade to life is the crispy line up around it. I ain't using no holding spray. I'm going straight in like from this side. I'm keeping it clean as possible. Keeping it natural as possible. Keeping it as far out as possible. Cleaning up all them longer hair that's sitting on top of the edge up so it can be crispy as possible. Like, we want to actually see that line up. So, you got to clean up the longer hairs that's around it. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that playing a part of being a great barber, bro. Like, you got to take your time. Like, you got to go the extra mile doing extra things. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you can run through 30 heads in a day. Like, I see people, like, I, I know barbers that do that. They probably end up making more dollars than me, but I'm going to be able to charge more eventually and, like, make more money off of one head. You see what I'm saying? Like, your 10 heads might be my one head. I ain't even going to lie. I be wilding myself sometimes with these haircuts, bro. Boy hit me like it was an emergency, so you know we had to get on it. I ain't gonna lie, I thought it was over with. Boy, we had to get him in the door to knock a whack haircut, nigga. Ho, man, you did. Yeah, Shad Gang, I don't buy him, man. It's your boy Slice Guy Lenore. Back with some more heat. I'm coming with heat every time, so please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, be sure to leave me a thumbs up in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this cut. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm gone. Slap.